All right. So here's a run through of question number one, uh, chapter five stuff. So they tell us that there's this point, there's one rope that goes up, one rope that goes to the left, and one rope that goes down at an angle, uh, 30 degrees below the horizontal. Uh, I've labeled the rope going to the left as rope one, the rope going up is rope two, and the rope at an angle is rope three. So this is the tension force that rope one exerts on this point. Uh, this is the tension force that rope two exerts on this point. And this is the tension force that rope three exerts on that point. And the problem tells us that uh, rope three has a tension force of 100 newtons. Um, I'm kind of choosing up to be positive and right to be positive. I guess not kind of, I am choosing up positive, down negative, to the right positive, to the left negative. Uh, then as I go through and I start to uh, look at the variables for this problem, uh, X direction stuff, I've got uh, a really uh, a fair number of things that we don't know. We don't, the only real value that we know is that, and I guess, you know what, a smart guy would have put uh, theta equals 30 degrees in there as well. Um, so I've got this tension force uh, that rope one exerts on the point in the X direction. Don't know what that is. The tension force that rope three exerts on that point in the X direction, the X component of this force, uh, we don't know. The X component of rope two on that point is zero, right? It's pretty much straight up. They tell us in the problem that these are horizontal, vertical, and at right angles to each other. Uh, and they tell us that the object uh, doesn't move. Uh, not moving is not as important as the velocity being constant. The velocity is constant, so then that means that the total force on that point in the x direction is zero. Uh, the tweeners, neither x nor y, uh, 3p, 100 newtons, that angle is 30 degrees. Then looking at the y direction, I'm just uh, looking at the vertical forces here, the tension force that rope 2 exerts on that point in the y direction, we don't know. The y component of the tension force that rope 3 exerts, we don't know. Remember rope 3 down at this angle, that's kind of like pulling to the right and down at the same time. So this is looking at the downward component of that. Um, and the tension force that rope one exerts on that point in the y direction is zero. Again, going back to them saying, hey, the, those are at right angles. Ropes one and two are at right angles. Uh, and then the total force uh, on the, in the y direction is zero. Again, going back to the idea that that thing is sitting there still. Um, a couple of things that we're going to assume uh, that no stretch in the rope or that if it stretches, that that stretch is small enough to ignore. Um, the other thing, uh, just making sure that this is a clear uh, agreement that um, the rope two is purely vertical, there's no X component, uh, and rope one is purely horizontal, there's no Y component. So if I'm looking at force two's Y, com the, pardon me, if I'm looking at the tension force that rope two exerts on that point of interest, if I look at the vertical component of that, that's the same thing as looking at uh, the actual force of tension. Likewise, if I'm looking at the X component that rope one exerts on that point, well, that's the same thing as looking at the force of tension uh, in point one. Now, um, if I'm going to start with trying to find uh, this uh, force of tension that rope one exerts on the point, uh, I underlined it up here. We're really saying, hey, these are the same things. This is what I want to find. Uh, this is what I'm looking for, right? That's one of the questions that the, that the problem asks us to solve for. Um, so now I'm going to think or work through what routes can I go to get that answer, to get that number. I don't want to just start randomly, willy-nilly throwing numbers together and hoping an equation pops out that works. I want to, you know, think about things and, and have a reasonable approach. So one thought that often pops up is, hey, can I just use MA? Is F1P going to be equal to MA? Well, not so much. It's not going to be just MA because MA, remember, is for the total force uh, on an object equals MA. And that's not the total force. There are a bunch of different forces uh, acting on that point. 
So it's not just going to be MA. So if it's not just going to be MA, then uh, the other relationship that we can look at is uh, we've been using the Newton's second law, or the sum of the forces. So I can go and say, hey, uh, the sum of all forces on that point in the x direction is, and then I'm just going through and I'm listing all of the forces that could act in the x direction. So if I go back up here, well, I've got the x component of force one on that point. I've got the x component of force two on that point. I've got the x component of force three on that point. Adding up all of those x components gives me ma in the x direction. Now, as we go through and look at that, I just went through and said, hey, all of these things are things that can exert a force on that point. Um, but now this is all looking at the x direction. And as you might remember, the um, rope two, we're saying, doesn't have an x direction. So that's gone. The acceleration is zero, so that's gone. So now I get this rope is going to the left, so it's negative. This rope, this rope, has a component to the right, so it's positive. So now I can say the sum of the forces on that point in the x is this to the left plus this to the right, and that equals zero. And that gets me to, hey, these two are the same size, right? Um, if this is 10, that's 10. If that's 20, that's 20. But now that's not saying this, uh, they tell us that this force is 100 newtons in the problem. That does not mean that this is 100 newtons. This is 100. We need the x component here, right? Remember, x component. So now we're starting to look at components of that force. So this is looking just at rope 3. So this rope 3 up here is just this right here. Rope 3 here is 100 newtons. The x component of rope 3, the y component of rope 3, we're trying to find the x component, and that tells us the force that rope 1 exerts uh, on that point. So I've got this angle, this hypotenuse, and this uh, adjacent side. So if I go through and look at my Sokotoa stuff, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, we have the angle, we want the adjacent and hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse is looking at cosine. And then we get to the spot where we can start looking at solving that bugger. So we've got, looking just at that triangle again, looking just at uh, this force and finding the x component, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. If we put that in physics terms, cosine of the angle is the x component of force 3 on that point divided by the actual force 3 on that point. And then we want to get this by itself, so we multiply both sides by the tension force that 3 exerts on the point. And so now we get the x component is the tension force that rope 3 exerts on the point times the cosine of the angle. And now we can plug our numbers in. We get 100 newtons times the cosine of 30. And then um, some of you guys probably uh, have all these different sine cosine trig values memorized for 30, 60, 90 triangles. Um, I always punch them into the calculator. That's not a thing that I ever committed to memory. When I, and when I punch them into the calculator, I get all of this, 86.602540388 newtons. Uh, and at some point, you have to say, hey, that's a lot of numbers that maybe um, not all of them are all that terribly important. Uh, there's surely some rounding going on in these hundreds and thirties. So I'm going to kind of uh, truncate this, round this off at some point. On the AP physics exam, really the basic idea is, hey, they give me three digits here, they give me two digits here, eh, and my answer, I'm going to give them two or three digits. So I could either go with like 86.6 or I could go 87. Um, I went saying 86.6 newtons for the X component of the force of tension that P exerts on, or pardon me, for the force of tension that three exerts on that point. And that means that that's also the force of tension on rope one. Um, now, last bit, we still need to then find the force of tension that rope 2 exerts on that point, right? That's the other part of that problem. 
we know this one now, we just did that, we need to find this one. So this one, um, we just kind of went through and looked at similar stuff. Um, we can go through and use Newton's second law, the sum of the forces on that point in the y direction, and then I can just go and say, hey, these are the three things that exert forces in the y direction. Uh, turns out, or that could, turns out that force one actually has no y component, force three has a component that's in the y direction but is not all in the y direction, total force is zero, the velocity is constant. Velocity is constant. Uh, and so now I can say, hey, the y component of two is the same as the y component of three, and recall that the y component of two is all of rope two. So now I'm back to that same bit of Sokotoa. I know this is 100. I know this is 30. I need to find the y component of rope three because that is the force that rope two exerts on there. They're the same magnitude. So I'm just going back down to my trig functions. Um, I have the opposite and hypotenuse. So I'm probably looking at sine. The sine of this angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. If I put that in physics terms, the sine of that angle is the y component over the actual force uh, that three exerts on that point. I plug those numbers in and I get 50 newtons for the y component of force three, which is the same then as force two. Force two, 50 newtons. Very good.